Along this country road in Greenbrier County, West Virginia, sits a quiet Methodist church. This church could be like any other in Appalachia, but for one person whose body lies in this cemetery. Today we tell the story of the Greenbrier Ghost. Elva Zona Heaster was born in Greenbrier County in West Virginia in the 1870s. In October 1896, Zona met her fate in the form of a drifter who'd come to town, a man named Erasmus Stribling Trout Shoe, who everyone called simply Trout. Well, Trout Shoe had wandered into Greenbrier County looking for a chance to start over. He took a job at a blacksmith shop and began to work iron for the folks who lived there. Zona met the handsome newcomer, and before long, the two had fallen in love and announced their engagement over Zona's mother's objections. Mary Jane Heaster had gotten a bad feeling about that young man and had taken an instant dislike to him. Wedded bliss was not to be Zona Shoe's fate, for just a few months after the wedding, a young errand boy found Zona lying at the bottom of the stairs in her home, stretched out with her feet together and one hand resting on her stomach. Terrified, the boy ran home to tell his mother what he'd found. She, in turn, contacted the doctor and coroner, George W. Knapp, to come to the shoe house immediately. Trout Shoe made it home before the coroner got there, though. By then, Shoe had taken Zona's body to the bedroom and laid her out on the bed. He dressed the corpse himself, which was unusual since the custom was to leave that job to the women of the community. He dressed Zona in a high neck dress with a stiff collar, then placed a veil over her face. And then he sat down next to her, refusing to leave while the coroner examined her, all the time cradling her head and crying. Apparently thrown by the husband's intense grief, Knapp only did a brief examination noting some bruising to Zona's neck. When he tried to examine the bruising more closely, Shu reacted violently, so violently in fact that Knapp ended the examination and left. George Knapp listed Zona Shoe's cause of death as everlasting faint. Soon enough, Mary Jane Heaster was informed of her daughter's death. Her response? The devil's killed her! Zona Shoe was buried here on January 24, 1897. Shoe remained at his wife's side from the discovery of her body to her burial at the cemetery. At first, everyone was impressed with his total devotion to his late wife, but that soon changed. You see, Shu's behavior grew increasingly odd. He allowed no one, not even Zona's family, to come close to her coffin. He placed a pillow on one side of her head and a rolled up sheet on the other, telling everyone that these would help her rest easier. He then tied a large scarf at her neck, saying it was her favorite. When the time came to move her coffin to the graveyard, several folks noticed that there was a strange looseness to Zona's head, causing it to bob around a bit. Now comes the interesting part of this story. In her grief and in a search for the truth, Mary Jane Heaster began to pray. This she did every single night for the next four weeks, hoping that God would reveal what happened to her daughter. Exactly four weeks later, Zona appeared to her mother in a dream. She told her that Trout Shoe was a terribly cruel man who abused her regularly. On that fateful day, he had attacked her in a fit of rage when he believed that she cooked no meat for dinner. He broke her neck, and to prove this, Zona's spirit turned its head around until it was facing backwards. The ghost of Zona Shoe visited her mother over the next four nights leaving the room with an unearthly chill and leaving her mother with the determination to have justice done. Mary Jane Heaster immediately went to the local prosecutor, John Preston, and spent several hours in his office trying to convince him to open the matter of a daughter's death. Her persistence eventually convinced him to do a little more digging. He sent deputies out to re-interview several people of interest in the case, including the coroner, George Knapp. In fact, Mr. Preston was so interested in Mr. Knapp, he went down himself to talk to him and got him to admit that he hadn't done a thorough examination of the body. 
As a result, an exhumation and autopsy was ordered, along with an inquest jury. On February 22nd, Zona's body was examined over Mr. Shue's vigorous complaints. He was required to be at the autopsy, which lasted three days. In the end, it was found that Zona's neck had been broken and her windpipe smashed. On her throat were the marks of fingers indicating she'd been choked. On that evidence and on Shue's behavior at the autopsy, he was arrested and charged in his wife's murder. She was held in the county jail in Lewisburg to await trial. During this time, authorities did a bit of background investigation on the accused, in which it was discovered that he'd been married two times before, with one marriage ending in divorce, the other when his wife died under mysterious circumstances. The ex, by the way, alleged great cruelty on the part of Mr. Shue as a ground for her divorce from him. In the jail, he began to talk to his cellmates of his desire to be married seven times. The trial began that summer on June 22, 1897, with the star witness being Mary Jane Heaster. During his direct examination, Attorney Preston avoided questioning Mrs. Heaster about those ghostly visits by her daughter, trying to keep everybody focused on the evidence at hand. But when Shoe's lawyer cross-examined Mrs. Heaster, he asked her extensively about those visits, and she was glad to answer fully. And she stuck to her story, no matter how much the defense tried to badger her. In essence, Zona Shu testified to the jury through her mother. And the jury believed that testimony. Not just the jury, but the entire community, which formed a lynch mob to take Shu from the jail and hang him after he was convicted of his wife's murder and sentenced to life in prison on July 11th. The mob was disbanded by deputies before anything was done to Shu. Trout Shue was sent to the West Virginia State Penitentiary in Moundsville, where he lived for only three years, dying on March 13, 1900, the victim of an epidemic in the prison. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the local cemetery. Mrs. Heaster went to her grave, convinced her daughter's spirit had visited her in 1897. She died in September 1916 and is buried here, next to her daughter, in the Methodist Church Cemetery. By the way, Zona's ghost was never seen again. And that, folks, is the tale of the Greenbrier Ghost, another story that makes up part of the history and the folklore of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for watching. Now be sure to go down below and click that subscribe button and ding the bell. And if you don't mind, give us a big thumbs up too, okay? Till next time, take care. So long, y'all.